We're about to break down the interaction between Kelsey and Coach Reed that happened in the Super Bowl. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Yeah, during the Super Bowl, Kelsey was off the field when another receiver fumbled the ball, and he went immediately to Reed to protest. After the fumble, he comes over to Andy and goes, keep me in. What happened is, on the fumble, he was not in the game. Noah Gray went in, and he had... All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, we're going to see a lot of people talking about anger because you see that rage in his face when they do the stills. But what I see is passion and a lot of passion. This is a guy who loves what he's doing. This has got a six foot five. And if you ever seen the Terry Tate, the office assistant, where he knocks people out of the way, if this guy ran to knock this guy over, he'd be knocked over. In fact, he grabs his arm and pulls, kind of like a six-year-old kid would go, put me in coach, put me in coach. That's what I see, a guy who really loves what he's doing. Mark, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, look, clearly a, a big guy. I don't know how much he weighs, but regardless of how fast he might be going, we can't really tell that in the slow motion. It, you know, if that velocity comes into you with that weight behind it and comes into your center of gravity, you, you're going to shift regardless of how fast or, or with what velocity somebody's coming in. So it's not surprising that that happens there. Testosterone levels are going to be high. The sense of risk is going to be low in that situation. So this person is maybe not in full control of their their body. And look, there may be expressions of aggression happening, which aren't about the aggression of the moment, but the aggression of the bigger picture uh, out there. Interesting uh, that that the coach or the manager don't quite know what his function is, goes for the elbow. That doesn't seem like somebody who's been uh, attacked in some way. That looks like, I mean, could be stabilizing himself, but wants to make contact, wants to see what's going on here. I love the save at the end, which is the the teammate who he's already turned. So there's very little aggression there because he's already turned and the teammate has come in there to kind of go, oh, settle it down, mate, settle it down. Well, it's all done. By that point, it, it's all done. It's all over. It was super quick. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. I focused on the coach because he handled that very well, I thought. And I think he's probably one of those guys that everybody knows he's in control, but apparently he's not one of those guys. I don't want to use uh, foul language, but he's not a, a mean person. I, I think his, his uh, players get along with him because that was almost a respect thing for him, letting him do that and then walk away. I think he understood this guy and understood that he's uh, upset and he's emotional. And I think you're right, Greg. I think it's mostly passion, not as much anger. I think he's frustrated. I think we're seeing frustration and concern right there. And that's the kind of guy you want to marry if you're Taylor Swift. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I have in my notes here, this is uh, aggression by proxy. So this is directed somewhere else. And right at the end there, you can see, I think he realizes I am not supposed to be challenging the tribal leader. And this is built into our DNA. And he turns away. And then after he's turned away, then he starts yelling a little bit more once he's turned away to, to communicate to the tribal leader that he's no longer a threat. And that's when the teammate steps in. So there's some deference, some submission there to the leader. One of those tape replays. After the fumble, he comes over to Andy and goes, keep me in. What happened is on the fumble, he was not in the game. Noah Gray went in and he had... He'd had that what I call a very engaging conversation. Oh, y'all got saw you guys saw that. What was the conversation well, about? Was it there were a few cameras? I mean, was it? Hey, I need the ball. I can help us win. What was that about? Uh, man, it was. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it between us unless my mic up tells the world. But uh, I was just telling him how much I love him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I don't know whether he's got somebody talking in his ear there or that is a threat check to the side to go. Hang on, did they did they pick actually pick up? what i what i said over the mic but it's interesting he kind of goes i'm not divulging anything until you tell me that you have evidence of what i said i'm keeping it uh within within the relationship that's there that says something about a a team uh there's no throwing under the bus uh, at this point uh, from my point of view that is a true smile uh there there is real uh pleasure there looks to me like he's keeping the the evidence private until told that it isn't private he's a team player as his teammate then goes on to suggest of the team as a whole the venting that's happening there which is like the pulling on the shirt i mean that could be as much about the actual heat of the game 
you know, as as there's some stress and pressure around there. Yeah, he wipes from there as well. So uh, so looks to me like uh, the behaviour of of a close team player. But I'm willing to have my mind changed on that. Uh, Chase, what did you see there? I don't know if I'm going to change your mind, but definitely right here, once we start growing up as kids, we develop defensive strategies and strategies for handling conflict and stress. And you can see that play out throughout our entire adult life. Think of the many ways he could have responded to this by with aggression, with uh, increasing, raising the stakes, getting more angry, or going the other way, uh, issuing a genuine apology, admitting he was wrong, going back into the details and saying, here's what I'm going to do next time. I'm going to fix everything. He defaults to a playfulness as a defense strategy. And I'm, I'm willing to bet he does this in multiple areas of his life, makes a mistake, something goes wrong, the stakes start getting raised up, and he defaults to kind of a playful mentality. He seems like uh, that kind of guy from this one video. Keep in mind, I know nothing about football, literally Nothing. Scott? I don't know anything either. I, re I really don't. But I, what I do see here is I understand now why Tay-Tay would be in love with him because he <laughs> goes right to humor. You know, he, he sees the world, like you were saying, he sees the world from a different point of view than a lot of people. And that's what tay, -Tay needs. She, she's got a lot on her. So the, the stress that she must be going through has got to be just phenomenally high. And I think that kind of sense of humor can can help uh, ease those stresses that that uh, somebody that's into T, who they are, that'll help unstress her, which helps unstress all of us, I think. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so for me, I think, yes, Chase, he does use humor in this case. He may not use humor every time he may. I mean, we saw his face and the intense passion that he had there. So he's probably got a little bit of that in him, too. Oh, but yeah. what is cool is you could see him immediately knowing that a smile and trying to you know play something off works for him. It's worked for him in the past for the organism has done it will do because it makes it successful but if you watch him there's a little discomfort at one point yeah you see sweat but there's no sweat on his nose and you see him touch his nose and drop his chin he's like wow dodge a bullet on that one moved on as soon as the quarterback picked it up one of those tape replays he had that what i call a very engaging conversation oh you guys saw you guys saw that what was the conversation <laughs> well, about was there it, were a few cameras i mean was it hey i need the ball i can help us win what was that about uh, man, it was, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it between us unless my mic'd up tells the world, but, uh, I was just telling him how much I love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he caught me off balance. I wasn't watching. He's a cheap shot, but that's all right. He did good. <clears throat> um, he was really coming over just to go, just put me in, I'll score, I'll score, you know, so that's really what it was. Well, I love that. I mean, it's not the first time, so I, listen, I appreciate him. Right here. Go ahead. Louder. Uh, Chase, what do you got? So you see, he starts out right away with this little gesture right here. And you'll see that a lot. Uh, in my training, I call this a ventilation gesture. Anything designed to cool off the body. There's some heat coming up. This is a long question, so his brain has time to pre prepare for it. Heats his body up a little bit from the adrenaline. That's probably what this response is. But I think he is extremely honest. I don't see any deceptive indicators, no deceptive behavior, just a little bit of stress in response to how he's going to answer that question. Mark? Yeah, I think it's nice how he, he he deals with it. I think you're right. I think that is probably some venting going going on there. Um, he plays into the idea of of the violence by going, yeah, it was a it was a cheap shot. So he's he's playful with it. You know, maybe Chase that is a a bit of a team spirit of being playful with each other around the aggression, and then the real aggression being out right. with everybody else with the the opponent, and maybe that was you know the 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 wrong move there to have accidentally been aggressive with another team player you know he's 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 gone over the line there but what does his coach or manager do there plays into the fun of it it's a cheap shot shot and then reframes to the idea of it being you know exuberance and really quite heroic you know let me in let me have a have a go i appreciate that about him Beautiful reframe, and again, speaks to me to we're going to play as a team here. We're throwing nobody under the bus. We'll have some fun. We'll play as a team. We'll all walk out of this looking good. Uh, Greg, what did you see there? Mark, I'll take it a step further as far as team player goes. I think the nervous energy he shows when he blushes and then he does a couple of adapters tapping around on the table, I think that's really about him falling, not about the 
so-called attack. I think he's like oh, embarrassed that he fell. You can see him blushing. You can see that little bit of nervous energy, that ner- nervous smile. I think that's really what it's about, not about any kind of interaction otherwise. So it's a good example of teamwork. Scott, what do you got? I I agree with you. I think the the ventilating thing, quite often we'll see that when somebody, uh, when someone is getting in a situation where they're asking questions that are aggressive and you'll see them ventilate, they'll do that. It's almost like the Rodney Dangerfield, you know, hey, I get no respect. And women will do it when they pull their hair up like that. That's why I think Taylor would do it when she gets uh, a little bit heated up. You'll see her ventilate that way as well. Now, I think maybe he was being a little bit humorous because he was thinking about what if – uh, Kelsey had asked her to marry him on the on the fifty yard line at the, at, during the the halftime thing, which I know we talked about. We all thought that was going to happen, and just I'm not a wreck. I know Greg was having a couple problems with it. He wished it had happened. And Mark and Chase, I think we lost money because they both said that's not going to happen. They're going to do it somewhere special, somewhere that's really <laughs> special to to take it. I knew your lack of football knowledge would come out somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just could not. I just know nothing about it at all. Can't help you. One of those tape replays. <laughs> yeah, he caught me off balance. I wasn't watching. He did a cheap shot, but that's all right. He did good. <laughs> um, he was really coming over just to go, just put me in, I'll score, I'll score. You know, so that's really what it was. Well, I love that. I mean, it's not the first time, so I listen, I appreciate him. Right here. Go ahead. <laughs> Louder. Early in the game, the offense wasn't quite clicking, and we saw Trav come over and, uh, I say, have an engaging conversation with you. What was that convo about? Because it seemed like the offense and everybody changed after that. What was that convo about? Uh, he, he caught me when I wasn't looking. <laughs> I saw that. It's a fumble. That was another turnover. Yeah, he didn't know you that. I, your play sheet. He didn't know I was going to go that far. You know? Right. So he came, then he came over and gave me a hug. So, so sorry about that. But he, you know what? He just wants to be on the field, and he wants to play. And so uh, there's nobody I get uh, better than I get him. He, he's a competitive kid, and, um, he, you know, he loves to play, and he makes me feel young, you know. But my balance is terrible, booger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chase, what do you got? So he's pretty swift on the answer here, and uh, he's able to answer it really quickly. And there's no need for him to calm down because he's answering everything honestly. And I'm sure maybe somebody will disagree, but, you know, haters going to hate. Greg, what do you got? (laughs) Well, he does adapt on his leg, and you're just being mean. But he does adapt (laughs) on his leg, and he shows a nervous laugh. And I think, again, this nervous laugh is because it's about him. I think there's a valued relationship because he talks positively about the guy. There's congruent messaging with both of his hands, and then both of them are back on the table after the illustrators. There's a low blink rate. Again, I think he's embarrassed at the falling. I think that's about it. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I think what he, I think initially, I think when the lip reading part of this comes out, we're going to find out that he was asking if he could uh, ask her to marry him on the 50 yard line. Because he, <laughs> he looks, he's all worked up emotionally. And that's what Tay Tay wants. She wants somebody who who understands her and who gets the Swifties, man. You got to be able to get in there and not only be her friend, but be the friend of the Swiftie, which I, I think he probably is. And we adore him. We adore Kelsey. And I think that's what the, it wasn't an argument, but I don't think he wants to say anything about it because we're seeing him hold back, hold back information. I think he's, he's holding back a little bit as he's standing there with, with both hands uh, on the table like that. Mark, what do you got? You may be onto something because doesn't the reporter here call it an engaging conversation, an engaging conversation? What is that a euphemism for? Is it the euphemism for that, it, that there was going to be a sideline uh, proposal of some sort? Or, you know, were you in a fight? Well, to this euphemism, we do see the thumbs adapt a lot there. So maybe there is some deception going on. But there's all kinds of deception, and some deception is socially important. We we, we tell lies in order to save face for other people. And so I would say this. If there is deception going on here, it's order. To, it's in order to save the face of this player to say, look, you know, he was being exuberant. Uh, he was, he was, he's a great player. I didn't feel like I was being attacked or my status was being taken down in any way. It was absolutely uh, fine because, you know, this brand of the team has to be kept up. And why not? Why not? Because it looks like a simple mistake might have been made. A transgression may have occurred but it all got sorted out. And now in front of the media, there's a bit of face saving for people. And and so if there is deception there, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. 
It's one of those tape replays. But early in the game, the offense wasn't quite clicking, and we saw Trav come over and, uh, I say, have an engaging conversation with you. What was that combo about? Because it seemed like the offense and everybody changed after that. What was that combo about? Uh, he, he caught me when I wasn't looking. <laughs> I saw that. It's a fumble. That was another turnover. Yeah, he didn't know you that. I, your play sheet. He didn't know I was going to go that far. You know? Right. So he came, then he came over and gave me a hug. So, so sorry about that. But he, you know what? He just wants to be on the field and he wants to play. And so uh, there's nobody I get uh, better than I get him. He, he's a competitive kid and um, he, you know, he loves to play and he makes me feel young, you know, but my balance is terrible, booger. <laughs> Just one more thing. All right, Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I think what happened here is to an extent he did lose his cool. He did come in a bit hot. Uh, it did turn out not as it, uh, it might have been expected and it did transgress a social rule here. But I think the coach or the manager, whoever it is, comes back in and redresses that saves face, good teamwork, I would say. Chase, what do you think? Yeah, so I've seen some people saying there was a huge overreaction and stuff. I think there was excitement that turned into aggression by proxy. And then we saw a reaction from a coach who has the composure and the maturity required to take a team to the Super Bowl. Greg? Yeah, I'd add to that exactly what you said, but I would add one last thing is these guys know each other better than we know any of them by watching their body language here. Yeah. And the organism does what made the organism successful. You got a passionate guy who loves the game that much. He's going, put me in coach like a six year old. And he just happens to be a real big guy. So it can look a lot different. If you ran into him with intent, we probably would have seen a very different outcome. Oh, yeah. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with all you guys. I, I think that the coach now, it's my understanding, and this is the only thing I know outside of what I've talked about about football so far, is this is his second one, second Super Bowl in a row. Is that correct? The coach. Reed. Yeah. Last year. I okay. don't even know whether it's a coach or a manager. I'd yeah. Say. Well, which makes sense because hey, he's coach. one of those guys that can that can read, pardon the pun, the situation and sees what it is. He's a pro. Not just as a coach. Obviously, he's got the damn Super Bowl twice. But I mean, he's been able to read the situation and say, here's what people are going to think, here's what I need to say, or here's what I'm going to say, and then sort of make it not that big a deal about it, yeah. which is tough because when people saw that, I'm sure they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Day Day's boyfriend is saying because when you see it, you go, oh my God, that's not good. But we will hear what happened later on. You know, there's this girl on TikTok who, who does the lip reading stuff. She'll get to it at one of these times i can't remember her name but i follow her and, and she lip reads the most the craziest stuff but it's all right what are you gonna say greg i called i called a friend of mine today who reads lips and she said we were texting and she was saying i can't see well enough because of the angles and facial hair so you may oh, have that problem. okay I'll well retry. this girl will be able to get it she, she she nails it every time this woman sorry so all right fellas thanks this is a good one and we'll see you next time so what do you got